Welcome to Make Your Mark podcast, where guests share their experiences, insights, and tactics to help you accelerate your business. So building, scaling, and monetizing your business is made easier. And I will be your host, Kay Suthar. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Make Your Mark podcast. And oh my goodness, I am so excited for this episode today because I've got an amazing guest for all of us. In fact, her name is Catherine. Catherine is a physically and neurodiverse woman herself. Built her career on inclusive innovation in people operations and HR tech. She lives by the motto that different is not a deficit. In 2014, she founded Titan Management, a national people's operation consulting firm. And then in 2021, she shook up HR Tech by designing the first ever fully accessible anti-bias applicant tracking system, plugin that fires the resume and showcases company diversity. Featured at Web Summit, HR Disruptor, SHRM, and London School of Business. I'm so excited for that because I am based in London. You guys already know that. She makes an energetic, interactive, education-based speaker who always brings some spice. Oh, I'm from India. We love our spice too. This is going to be an epic episode. Please welcome everybody to the stage, Catherine McCord. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I am so excited for you Thank to be here you. Today. I think that's my favorite intro I've ever had, ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very excited to be here with you. I love especially my international uh, opportunities to speak to people across the world are my absolute favorite thing. So I'm very honored to be here. Thank you. No worries. I'm so excited, especially around this topic that we're going to be talking about today, right? Because I feel like all entrepreneurs, business owners trip up, right? In in this area. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about HR and hiring and all of that good stuff that we all need to know uh, as business owners. But okay. before we get into the juicy bits, Catherine, i love for you to tell people a little bit about your background, you know, how you got to in business where you are today, because we all know it doesn't happen in the click of a finger or overnight. It's no. a long journey. It is. <laughs> Mine started in childhood, believe Ooh. it or not. So I, first of all, I, I was raised by fantastic parents who always just indulged my little whims and the, the ideas that I had and always just sort of embraced me as a human being from a very early age, which I loved. And I, I was the little girl who would create companies and sell shares of said company to friends and family. <laughs> um, I, I just kind of started doing that from a very small age. My cousins and I even uh, started what we called the Three Cousins Studio. And we would... <laughs> <laughs> make little films and things like that and sell shares in it. And uh, and I started playing interview very young with my mother because she was in recruiting and HR. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, we had lots of fun and I would have her fill out applications and interview and come to conventions that I put on where I put out all my stuffed animals at little booths <laughs> and made her visit them. I even fired her once, yeah. which, you know, th that's a little rude to fire your own mother. <laughs> right oh my goodness how right. did she take that I, she took it very well uh she was very proud of me because in my mind in the game I was playing she hit she earned her firing so she was very <laughs> proud of me that I was the kind of assertive <laughs> HR person and boss who would fire someone who had apparently done these things wow. so, so I I just kind of from from a very young age had an inclination towards business towards um, towards HR, uh, which at that part, I kind of tried to deny for years, like, no, I don't want to do that. I just want to be a leadership. And then right. I uh, fast forward, I did a lot of work with startups in my career. And I freaking love startups. I love startups and growth stage companies and helping them you know, reach their goals and building a business. I knew what that looked like from a very intimate standpoint, because I not only work for them, I would work hands-on with the entrepreneur themselves, right? Yeah. And uh, in either leadership or like an executive assistant type capacity. So then I ended up working at a recruiting agency. Ah. Yeah, a startup recruiting agency in Dallas. And I really loved the work, but I hated how people were treated. 
And I hated how uninclusive it was, which I didn't really have the right terminology at that point in my life, I won't lie, but I didn't like how how it was being done. Um, And so with the owner's blessing, I struck out on my own and started Titan. And it started more on the recruiting side. And now we've kind of evolved into people operations and a lot of inclusion work. And I couldn't be happier with with where I'm at. And then I accidentally invented a technology a couple of years ago. How do you accidentally invent something awesome? You you have no sleep and then have to head to the airport at 4.30 in the morning. What? And, and then and then it just listening. pops into your brain. It's right. Like, yeah, it's like a sleep deprived vision. And then it just <laughs> and then it just became a whole thing. Um and and I've really enjoyed it. it. It's been an interesting adventure because I have no background in technology. I cannot code to save my life. I built exactly <laughs> one feature all by myself, and it's the ugliest feature on the entire technology. Uh, but it's there, and I built it, and I'm very proud of it, nonetheless. So, wow. um, but it's been an interesting adventure, like you said. It's never a straight and narrow path, right? It's it's all over the place, and it's uh, and it, it even just during the Titan journey, which is almost nine years now, it's been. Wow no straight arrow trust me <laughs> wow. weaving and winding all over the place yes for sure and you know there's one thing that um you mentioned earlier that you love working with startups right i know there's a lot of people that really cannot stand working with startups and so we had, world. it is it is definitely but there was one thing that you said to me off camera as well right i know we're gonna we're gonna kind of like let people know the little secrets that we've had conversations off camera now you said that the one thing that you thrive on that you absolutely love is when you see people have those light bulb moments the transformations right the breakthroughs right which completely makes sense to me why you love working with startups right and the, the fact that you're a coach that thrives on that that wants to see that wants to see those kind of results is exactly why people need to work with you Right. Thank you. (laughs) I agree. People do need to work with me. Um, But I do. I I love that light bulb to go Mm. off. And and that is part of working with startups, right? So I kind of liken working with startups to teaching a kindergarten class, right? You kind of get them before they're, you know, at a stage where they have their own ideas and they, they've kind of, or they have some ideas, but it hasn't quite formed. They don't quite know what to do with it yet. Mm-hmm. And you get to watch that progress. And even the things that they thought were so concrete, when you learn together and you grow together and you see, oh, yeah. oh my gosh, like, no, there's this whole other, you know, opportunity to do it this way. And that light bulb goes off and you go in a whole new way and things become easier and they become more profitable and people become happier and the retention kicks in that's amazing. That's a really cool process to be part of. Absolutely. Now, you've also mentioned that you've worked for different companies. You worked in a recruitment agency, right? And you said that people weren't getting treated properly. Now, I've worked in corporate myself. I know exactly what that looks like, how that feels, right? And it is absolutely awful. It gets very political, right? And it is very much you and them. Right. With a hierarchy. Right. 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 Um, Now, what kind of differences or changes have you seen when it comes to HR and corporate and then HR and business? Oh, that's interesting. So I have. So HR is starting to evolve. Right. So we're even starting to move away from calling it HR into people operations to kind of put the focus Mm -hmm. back on the humans. Right. That's kind of the big call right now is. Which, by the way, that's what it was always kind of <laughs> aimed to be, just to kind of cut like hard left, you know. Um, and HR was originally designed a little bit more to protect the company. And now we're starting to move away from that as well, where it's more, um, and, and that, that part kind of happened slowly, right? So there was this evolution of, hey, we need to be uh, more impartial. You know, and we need to kind of be that that kind of mediator type force, which is good. You need that in this type of situation. And then now it's even gone further. Of we also need to be taking care of the humans. We're going to take the extra step and preemptively take care of these humans. Now, what's interesting is there are a lot of corporations that are still fighting this, 
which is weird to me. Yeah, why would because well, they have a very backwards idea that it doesn't help them to do these things. It doesn't help them to be inclusive. It doesn't help them to take care of their people. They actually don't realize. And what's interesting is there are so many scientific studies that say otherwise, that say that people work more effectively when they are comfortable. They are healthier and happier. Therefore, they call in less and they're going to stay with you longer. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to take care of your humans. It makes good business sense to take care of your humans. Um, Not to mention your branding. And nowadays people are paying attention to that. Even on the customer side, if Mm -hmm. if you have a a brand for not taking care of your humans, you actually do lose customers. Even some of the mega brands have started noticing that and had to start correcting to fix their problems. Right. And so I guess the people that are kind of fighting it are those that don't want to kind of move with the times and change and evolve and get better right and again this is something that I hear all the time when it comes in a corporate world right like this is how we do it this is how it's always been done and this is what we're going to stick to right ego defense and by the way okay if you say I got I'm sorry I have to say this this is one of my soapboxes if your only reason for doing something is that that's how you've always done it that is a stupid freaking reason stop <laughs> stop <laughs> dumbest reason ever to do something absolutely um, and and that's the ego defense by the way what you're describing mm-hmm. it's a natural uh defense that our brain has developed over the thousands of years it had a purpose at one point that's a whole other d- conversation but it did have a, a, pro- a purpose at one point but it no longer really serves us and so what happens is when you get information that says what you're doing is not a, not correct your brain automatically starts throwing up defenses and saying, no, I'm right because, no, I'm right because, no, I'm right because. And that stops you from wanting to evolve. So one thing that I teach a lot is instead of responding with ego, respond with curiosity. When somebody says to you, hey, I don't like this, or this isn't right, or you're doing this wrong, stop and say, okay, why? Tell me about that. Tell me more about that. And give your brain the information because then it will start to calm down and slowly start to ease into okay, so maybe we could adjust here and we could, you know, and maybe it's a compromise. Maybe you're not all wrong, but you still need to hear that information and whether or not you are actually wrong. If your people are telling you that there's a problem, it may not be exactly what they're saying, but there is a problem. Right. Okay. I like that. Right. You know, see it as being curious and wanting to ask questions, wanting to learn, right. Because again business owners entrepreneurs you don't ever stop learning right you always want to ask the question why why are we doing it this way? why has it changed you know what's going on what, what's the other perspective that I'm not seeing right and so I love that part and so I guess what kind of or how how has it shifted from it being this traditional HR department that's very structured right how has it changed what's changed why is it changing? It's changing because it needs to, honestly. And with the world the way it is today, we can't leave things the way that they were. It's just not going to be accepted anymore. So it's changing in a way to take care of people. So we're focusing more on what the humans need, less on just what we think the company needs, which they often tend to kind of actually goes hand in hand, but uh, we're just kind of learning new ways to view that. Putting more emphasis on paid time off, benefits, Mm -hmm. mental health. Oh my gosh, folks, if you don't have mental health care benefits, you're missing the mark. That is the thing, especially if you're in a service industry where you have people on the phone dealing with customers. Mm -hmm. Get mental, trust me, dealing with customers is not easy. (laughs) People need mental health care after a day of that, trust me. Um, For sure. I but totally yeah, that, agree with that. It's just a matter of taking care of your people and moving forward into that. And I'm starting to innovate hiring. So for instance, I teach the importance of podcasting and of having a public presence for your employer brand. And mm-hmm. because people want to know you, they want to know who the humans are. And so I tell them, like, get out there, have your HR folks, have your leadership out there visible and then post those things to your social media, to your website, let people see you and get to know you. And that will also, this is one that a lot of people miss, that will get an active candidate stream coming your way. People will actively seek you out to work for you because they know you. 
and they like you and they're comfortable with you. Yes, that no like and trust that we all talk about, right? Um, that makes complete sense. Now, Catherine, what are some of the mistakes that you see business owners make when it comes to the HR and processes? Because we've got to admit, business owners, entrepreneurs, aren't always great at this point, right? <laughs> at this point in the business, it kind of doesn't work out the way they plan it to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> honestly, the, the, main, the main mistakes that I see people make are surrounding that this is how I've always done it or this is what's easiest mm. for me. Number one, what seems easiest now is not necessarily easiest ongoing. I've walked in, seen a lot of processes that I've gone in and cleaned up and they fought me on it. And then the second I was done, they go, oh, okay. Yeah, this is way better. And this takes me half the time. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's just, so a lot of it, again, breaking down that ego defense, but some of the most common ones are, um, oh God, in hiring, I'm going to speak to HR thing specifically, no more personality assessments, please, please stop. Wait, I they thought are, that was a good thing. No, 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 no. So I so I have a whole, this is a whole soapbox of mine as well. So mm-hmm. number one, they're horribly uninclusive, especially for the neurodiverse population. A lot of people don't realize that. And by the way, the neurodiverse population is almost a third of the population because that covers everything from ADHD, dyspraxia, dyslexia, autism, uh, bipolar, mm-hmm. certain forms of epilepsy. So this is almost a third of the population. And those those tests are not inclusive of this group. Um, wow. They can cause a lot of anxiety. They can actually cause people to get stuck because it's they're so stressed out by it. Uh, sometimes the wording is not friendly. Sometimes the visuals are not friendly. Um, so, and, and not on top of that, um, there's not really a reason for them. I, I don't get it. I've never understood that. If you're good at interviewing, why? <laughs> Why do you need that? And I'm not talking about um, the the ones that like tell you how to communicate with somebody. That's different. So I've seen those that can be very positive. This is a good way to communicate with this person. I'm not talking about skill assessments. There are certain jobs. Now, don't do that for like a cashier. Come on. That's Uh. stupid. (laughs) That's just just idiotic. I've seen it. It's weird. Don't do that. Um, But for things like IT, right? Having like a coding assessment. Fine. But personality assessments can also be exclusive because how a person answers may reflect, you know, some, it, they, the way that they see themselves may not quite fit. Um, mental health can play into that. People can be afraid to disclose certain things, so they may not be able to be honest with you. So you're basically encouraging them to lie. Um, so I just tell people, don't, don't do it. It, it just causes stress and problems and you're going to pass candidates. Um, another one is when you hire people, Mm-hmm. Uh, it's counterproductive to make a, an ideal candidate profile. And that one shocks a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so what I tell people is when you do that, you're actually putting biases in your brain. So it's biases aren't just prejudices against other humans, right? It, it just means that this is what my brain thinks is good or bad. And so when you do that, you've taught your brain that only this is the right answer. Right. Whether you mean to or not, a lot of people don't mean mean it that way, but that's what they've told their brain is that this is the only right answer. So instead, just say, I need somebody who solves this problem. Right. Okay. The end. Wow. <laughs> and it works. Um, and it really innovates hiring. Um, and then the other thing is just be make accommodation standard, especially in the interview process. Um, be flexible. Um and listen to your people. Honestly, that's a big thing. If you want to know what your people need, listen to them. It Absolutely. Works. Okay. Um, that was all good stuff there. And there were a couple Thank of you. things that absolutely did shock me, right? Like <laughs> the number one thing, good. like having what your ideal candidate looks like, like we've known that for years. Right. right? We've seen it ourselves, right? And you're all saying, the time. no, no, no. That's not the way to do it anymore. But it makes sense what you're saying. Like you've told yourself what the exact answer is and you're most likely not going to get that exact answer. Right. Right. So when we we look at that, like, and then recruiters wonder why we can't send the perfect candidate and why nobody's interviewing these great candidates that we're sending. Well, that's why. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That, yeah. That is the biggest reason, I guess. People can't find the right people because they already designed that right person in their head, which 
it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. You, you're, you're probably never going to find it. Probably right? not. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, guess what, Catherine? We've come to a point where we are now going to do the Make Your Mark Challenge, right? Oh, now, oh boy. <laughs> now, this is, this is fun. This is going to be absolutely fun. So it's a little short quiz that I do with all of my guests, just for a little bit of fun, right? Because I know when we have these conversations, it can get serious and we're talking about hr and all of this kind of stuff so i was like right let's let's tone it down let's get some excitement back let's have a few laughs <laughs> and so what the make your mark challenge is all about is so the podcast itself we're here talking about ways that business owners have done and can do and make their mark in the world right what's unique about them what kind of things have they done that has worked to make them stand out from the competitors and built their brand right built their business and so what this quiz we're going to be doing today is i'm going to give you 30 seconds right you are going to be on the clock 30 seconds okay. right the only thing i ask is no cheating no googling <laughs> right <Okay. laughs> no googling but i'm going to give you 30 seconds to name as many different businesses companies that have already made their mark in the world you know the kind of companies that we've come to love we use on a daily basis and okay. so at the end of the season at the end of three months i do actually tally up to see which guest has named as many different companies and brands. Oh, right? I can win this? Seconds. Oh, I'm, I'm down. Let's do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> and whoever the winner is gets a prize from me. Oh, cool. All right, I'm going to win. I yeah. have, I'm very competitive. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> oh, me too. Me too, most definitely. So I'm just going to get the timer up on the clock. And we are going to get this going. Let's see. Okay. Perfect. So like I said, 30 seconds, as many brands, businesses that you know that have made their mark, that we have come to love, we know them on a daily basis, we use them. Oh, wait, wait, real, real quick. Does they all have to be things that people will necessarily recognize or can it just be businesses that are making a mark and are doing something awesome? Um, so it's got to be um, brands that we have come to love and know. Okay. Okay. So popular brands. Got it. Yeah. Because they have made the biggest mark in the world right okay and so we got 30 seconds you're on the clock and it starts now all right google twitter facebook linkedin instagram snapchat um let me think oh god tesla um ford chevy um let me think oh my god this actually is harder than you would think uh, <laughs> express <laughs> gap uh dolce and gabbana gucci um, Michael Kors, um, Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger, uh, TJ Maxx, Ross, um, Charlotte Roos, um, and stop. Oh, okay. oh my God. You know what? You did really, really well. Oh Thank my you. goodness. You really are competitive. Let's take I a am. look. <laughs> Let's take a look. You've got, I'm just going to calculate this 20. Oh my Sweet. goodness. Sweet. That is awesome. <laughs> that is absolutely awesome. Well, thank you for playing the, the Make Your Mark Challenge. <laughs> that was fun. I like that. But do you know what? You really had these brands coming out off of your tongue like it was really easy. Like you were reading it from a script, right? I just started like thinking about it. <laughs> Looking around the room helps. I was like, okay, what do I have? Like what? <laughs> It most certainly does. And do you know what? It's funny because we know so many brands, right? right. But the minute all of a sudden you put on a timer, you it kind of just, yeah, it just, <laughs> everything leaves from your mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? But no, that That's was so awesome. Funny. That was awesome. And so what will happen is at the end of the season, I will send every guest an email to let them know what their scores are and who the winner is. And cool. we'll take it from there. So thank you for playing. But sure. <laughs> getting back to the episode, we we're talking about HR and some of the mistakes that a lot of people are making and the changes that's going on. And so what are, you know, what are some of the things, I guess, business owners and entrepreneurs should be taking on board, right? And what are some of the processes that 
they should be thinking about when hiring an individual? That's a good question. So uh, again, make accommodation standard. And what I mean by that is make sure that your candidates and even your your hired employees are comfortable at all times. So over 50% of the population can benefit from some sort of accommodation. So just make them standard options. If you want information on that, you can reach out to me. Um, go ahead and be public. Have a public facing uh, appearance because that's how people get to know you have a voice out there um, and and let people really connect with you also on the back end there are internal podcasting systems that you can use where your leadership can podcast to your folks do that let them get to know you um, that's a great tool also um make sure that you're inclusion focused and inclusion cannot be exclusive. So you don't get to pick and choose. Um, and that doesn't mean tokenism. Just want to throw that out there. Tokenism <laughs> helps literally nobody. Um, and then the kind of the last thing I would say is make sure that your HR tech is, is up to speed. So a lot of the applicant tracking systems and HRS have not really evolved much in the last 15 years or so. So make sure that you're bringing it up to speed. A lot of them can be evolved. A lot of them are customizable. If they're not, just get a new one. There are some great out there. Obviously, I'm partial to my own Titan ATS, but also Jazz HR is a great applicant tracking system. Greenhouse is decent, not one of my favorites. And for customizing kind of more expensive options, Salesforce Recruiter is actually incredible. Um, okay. So I'm so glad you brought this topic up about tech, right? Because when people think about HR, they don't think about tech at all. No. Nope. And so why is tech important when it comes to HR? And I guess also I would love to learn a little bit more about the, the tech that you invented while you were sleep deprived. <laughs> while I was sleep deprived, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I, I invented a tech while I was sleep deprived. That is exactly what happened, a person without a tech background. Um, so HR tech is very important because it's, and so for people who don't know, applicant tracking systems are CRMs for humans. This was invented as an answer to things like Monster, Indeed, things like that. Um, when the people started getting mass influx of candidates, they needed some way to take care of them and organize them. So think of it as a CRM for people. And then there's HRIS, which kind of man manages things like benefits, payroll, uh, time off, things like that. That's, that's kind of what it's used for. It kind of cycles people through. If you move them through the company, the HRIS helps with that. So that's kind of, kind of what the two main technologies that you're going to see right. are. Um, and it's important, A, for organization. It is. You've got to stay organized and like ever honestly, it's not, I was going to say in today's world, but that's not it. Just ever just be organized, yeah. be an organized human, um, especially if you're uh, in business. And then also they are important for inclusion purposes um, and in terms of having the correct one. So you don't want to have one that's, that causes stress to your applicants, that it, that causes racism. So this is a new thing okay. that a lot of people are not paying attention to in their applicant tracking is that they are asking questions that can be illegal, that are discriminatory and oh, that wow. are very off-putting to candidates. So, and it's, and some of it I think is a misguided attempt to be inclusive, but I'm seeing a lot of, and this is actually an international problem okay. right now. I'm seeing a lot of questions about sexuality what is your disability? You. Uh, what is your age? Which is super discriminatory. You are not yeah. supposed to ask that. Cut it out. Um, it's, it's so it's very strange. So you have to you have to really make sure that you're taking care of yourself. Um, also, repeating questions over and over again gives people a sense of anxiety and a sense of okay, what are you trying to do here? This is very weird. Um, and then there, there's just you know, for people with dyslexia and uh, ADHD and autism, there's all different kinds of little things that can that can come into play. So um, when I invented my technology, it was because I hated most of the applicant tracking systems that were out there. Um, okay. And I use hate accurately there. It was like a real, like, just point of contention. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um and for with most with most of them and that's because they're not designed a to be inclusive b to remove bias and c 
they are not designed to properly present a candidate to the hiring team. So when I invented my technology, I made it fully accessible through a partnership with UserWay, where you could even click on a diagnosis that you have, and it will change the whole site to make it more conducive for you, which is really cool. Um, And that even includes things like visual impairment, things like that, uh, which is, which is great. Then we have, um, it's designed by the neurodiverse for the neurodiverse. So everything's kind of, you know, more friendly there, but then it's also designed by a hiring professional for hiring professionals. And I got a bunch of my recruiter and HR friends together and even just hiring managers, people that were not in HR. And mm-hmm. we all agreed unanimously actually on how a candidate should be presented, what it should look like. And so that's when it goes off to be presented, that's how it's formatted. It's what relevant projects has the person done? What skills, you know, the skills that are important to us, how do they rank with those? You know, those types of things. Um, no names, no titles, really? because titles are confusing. Yes, <laughs> titles, especially wow. in the US right now, titles are, they don't always match up to what you're actually doing. So no titles, no dates, but we do have an average tenure feature. So you can see how long somebody tends to be with a job, but there's no dates. So that way, if a woman took time off to give birth, if somebody took time off to take care of a relative or just took time off, because why the heck not? No discrimination uh, based on those things. Um, So it's just, it's just kind of a different design. It's, I always tell people, I like to say it's designed by humans for humans. Yeah, oh my god, that that is so interesting to me that there's so many things that you have completely taken out because it's unnecessary. Why should you be you just judged? Don't get it. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. whether you're competent in that role or that job or whatever it is because of your title or you know yeah. your date of birth or you know how many years it doesn't matter. Birth. Yeah. It does, it doesn't. And do you know what? This oh my goodness, I've got to tell you, Kathleen, I've got to tell you this funny story that happened to me when I went for a job. Right. When okay. I was back in college, right? Part-time job in a supermarket. Right. Should be and simple. they were doing this, right. They were doing this huge recruit. It's for um a, com- a, a supermarket called Waitrose in London. This huge, huge recruitment thing, right? Big fairs and all of this. And they were looking for like college students right? To do shift work, oh, yeah. work Saturdays, you know, all this kind of stuff. And I was like, super, super excited. I was like, yes, I'm going to be making some money while I'm a student, right? Told yeah. all my friends about it. We all went down to apply. We had to do like a group interview, a one-on-one interview. Like it was all of this kind of stuff, right? And I was like, I'm going to smash this out of the park. Like, this is going to be so cool. Love I'm the so in, right? <laughs> like, I'm so in. Until they called me into an office, right? Passed the group assessment, passed the exam, passed the one-on-one. They called me into an office and said, oh, we'd we'll like to have a conversation with you. I was like, okay. And they go, well, you've applied to do like um, the customer service, right? Behind the customer service desk or at the till and all of this kind of stuff. Right. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. And they were like, well, unfortunately, we can't give you those positions. And I'm like, but but why? Like I passed a group interview, I passed right. the one on one, the exam. Like why not? And they were like, for health and safety reasons, we can't give you a role behind a desk because you are only four foot ten, and uh, you have to be five foot one or five foot two to work behind their counter because their counter was a certain height as well. And because of that, I was the only one from my friends that didn't get a job. Yes. Wow. It is. Yes. um, Right. Sorry. Like, like, right. Like, right. When you said that, first of all, that's so, so cruddy. And at least here in the States, very illegal. Uh, (laughs) Although, you know, what, height is not really a protected status unless you're below a certain height but it's the whole thing but I that's so gross but the other thing that kept playing in my head is there's an episode of a tv show that my husband and I watch called the league and it's about a bunch of people that play fantasy football and there's a whole episode about how one of the characters is a height supremacist and only wants to work (laughs) like really like on board players that are a certain height and I'm like, was this person a height supremacist? Like, what the crap? <laughs> like, what, what difference? I, my, one of my 
very best friends is about four foot nine. Right. And I think she's squeezing it an inch on us, to be honest. Um, <laughs> she's about four foot nine. And, um, and she can do freaking anything. Like, I, just, it. Yeah. I don't understand. Like, and, and it's called a stool or a <laughs> box. Like, I don't know, like, it can't be that hard to accommodate yeah. that, right? Like, Absolutely. But like it, it was, it was oh. mind boggling to me that that was the That's only so thing that That's they could so say to me to say no, right? And I was and how like, is that a safety issue? Wait, wait, wait. Now I'm no. Now I need like the mechanics of this. How is this <laughs> a safety issue? But that makes you know, no sense. How awful. You know what the other funny thing is, right? They said no to me, but then guess who hired me next? the Metropolitan Police, I then became a police officer. <laughs> they I had no issues of my height whatsoever. I love it. Right? I love it. And so I look back and I'm like, how does that even make sense? A supermarket said no, but I could be running around on the streets chasing bad guys, right? And that was <laughs> not an issue. Nope, nope. Actually, one of my favorite stories ever about things like that it, this was actually a sexism story yeah. was it was a, a a company that the um it was a company I worked for a while back and they did uh, security and they had a, uh, a a manager that came to me and he said I can't have women in this position and I said wow. why yeah. and he goes well they're not strong enough to to have to tackle or manhandle somebody or this that or the other I said okay and so I walked out of the room and I come back in with a, a woman who was about your height, by the way. Um, her name was also Catherine. Mm -hmm. And so she and I had a whole thing about that. And I brought her in and I said, this is Catherine. And she is an ex-Marine and she, or former Marine, they like to say former. She's a former Marine. And she is, uh, I said, she's one of our officers and she just took down a 260 pound man on a train, Whoa. tackled him to the ground, cuffed him. Yeah. And so I need oh, you to look baby. at her and tell me exactly mm -hmm. what you just said to me. Yeah. <laughs> and he just yeah. kind of hung his head. <laughs> and I'm like, it's the individual, first of all. You know, like, stop assume again, right? Stop assuming, stop picturing the ideal candidate. Stop it because you never know. And sometimes these you know, smaller uh, people and even women can be extremely tough. And, and how that means that you can't be a cashier is just, baffling to me but that's a whole other <laughs> <laughs> yeah like that, do, do you know what it was so fun because I was so young it, it kind of destroyed me I was like I'm never oh. gonna get a job again no oh god me of my but see, that's, okay but I want to hit on that because that's exactly the message that you send and mm -hmm. when you place dis when you assign disability which is essentially what they did to you they essentially right. said to you you are disabled you cannot do this when you assign disability to somebody you break them down and that's your insecurity, not theirs. Yeah. I tell people that all that, that is your issue. You right. don't think that that can be done. Mm -hmm. I have seen the craziest things. I literally watched a video not long ago of a person in a wheelchair who was moving furniture for a living. Right. Like I would have never in a million years. <laughs> thought <of this. laughs> like, honestly, um, but, but it's, it can be a thing. So I tell people don't assign again, don't picture, right. Mm -hmm. Don't picture that perfect candidate. Don't picture what you think they need to do. Ask them, ask the person, can you do this? Is this right. a job that you can do? And that's the end of the discussion. Yeah. Period. yeah and <laughs> most definitely. And one of the other things is, I guess you don't really know what the person is capable of until you put them in that role, right? right. They may surprise you. Right. Yep. Oh gosh, yes. I've been surprised <laughs> several times. Yeah. I had right? I, I had people think I was insane because I hired a woman who was well over the age of 60 to be a junior recruiter and to completely train her in recruiting. And they thought I was bonkers. And she ended up being one of our top recruiters. And I'd be like, see? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's great. She was wonderful. And people related to her and they liked her and they kind of bonded to her. And it, it's just stop assuming. It's so crazy. I have a good friend who has seven children, is very public about this. And she, she is constantly talking about her seven kids and they're great. And so a lot of people are like, oh, well, you can't hold down a job because, or you can't have a responsible job because you have these seven kids. So you couldn't possibly be like an executive or something like that. She goes, 
what? <laughs> I absolutely can wow. do that with seven children. <laughs> wow. I, mean, I just, yeah. you know what, like, again, like what you said, just don't, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge them from the, you know, the one conversation you've had with them. Right. <laughs> like the best way, I guess, um, and being a leader, right. You know, being a leader, being a business owner, it's a throw people, I guess, in the fire pit. That sounds so bad, but throw people in the fire pit. <laughs> yeah. Seeing, right? Yeah. How how they're gonna work this out. Challenging yeah. people. Right. Yes. If they're not, guess what? If, if it doesn't work out, then you can say, you know what, we gave you a chance, it hasn't worked yeah. out, and that's the end of it. Yeah. The end. It's very simple, but people will surprise you. And attitude and desire goes so far. Oh, they do. Yeah. People really overlook that. And like your enthusiasm for that grocery store job, they missed out. You yeah. were so stoked. You even brought them other candidates. Yes. Like exactly. what was wrong with these people? I would have hired you in five seconds. <laughs> like, like what in the world? I don't, I don't know, but yeah, give people right. a chance and get to know the human, not just what you see. And when somebody comes in who is different than what you expected, who is maybe different, you know, physically uh, diverse, who is maybe neurodiverse, who is maybe age diverse, give them a shot, give them a shot because they will surprise you sometimes and be some of the most incredibly competent, wonderful people you could yes. have ever imagined. Yes. Yes. And because you've taken a chance on them, oh my God, their loyalty to you yes. and going the extra mile will yes. be astonishing. One hundred percent. Yes, I love that. I love that. Now, Catherine, I know at this point people are thinking, "Oh my goodness, how do I get hold of Catherine? I need to learn more from her." So, where can they go to connect with you? Uh, first of all, LinkedIn. I eat, live, and breathe on LinkedIn. So, yeah. come find me on LinkedIn, Catherine McCord. Mm -hmm. I think I'm one of like two Catherine McCords on all of LinkedIn. So, just <laughs> come find me. It's Catherine with a K. Um, and then also Titan Management USA .com, Titan managementusa.com is my website and then also my show career launch live on fridays 10 a.m live on linkedin uh facebook and youtube too but we don't really get an audience there honestly um and then it will roll over to iHeartRadio and spotify as well brilliant awesome awesome now before we come to the end of this episode i feel like i can speak to you forever on so many different <laughs> subjects right we ha we're having so much fun right now but i mean you know you've decided as a business owner entrepreneur yourself um, to use guest podcasting as a way to market your business, your services, yourself to to gain the know, like, and trust. Why did you decide to use this? I get a marketing process to get yourself out there. Because my entire brand essentially is me, right. and so it's the best way to let people get to know me. And then I also because I teach it as a tool to my clients as part of employer branding. And so it's a great way to kind of showcase that and how useful it is and how, um, and how you can really spread good information on top of that and help the world learn and become a better place. It's just a great way to really showcase your expertise. Right. Absolutely. And you're able to speak to people on a global scale in the comfort of your own home. Yes. Right. Which is exactly. always awesome. Always awesome. It is. Fantastic. Now, have you found guest podcasting, right, to be um, something that works for you and your business and your clients and really kind of um, helping you get out there? 100%, 100% from every angle, from employer branding to marketing to uh, just having a brand, my speaking career. A lot of it came from from the podcasting, things like that. So 100%, I, I <laughs> preach this constantly to people, get on podcasts, be out there, um, let people get to know you. It works even for job seekers. I tell job seekers to do this, like get on a podcast because when people see you and they see that you're an expert, plus how cool do you look sending a link to your podcast episodes and your guest spots to an employer? How many people do that? They don't, oh, wow. you will stand out. Oh, most definitely. You'd be totally be making your mark right there, right. right? Oh, my goodness. That is awesome. Thank you once again, Catherine, for coming on to our show. It was an absolute blast. I had so much fun speaking with you. Thanks again. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. 
Thanks for listening to Make Your Mark podcast at www.makeyourmarkpodcast.com. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get this and every other episode that comes out. We have lots of great stuff coming, so make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss it. And thank you in advance for all the reviews and comments. I appreciate it so much. And I look forward to serving you in next week's episode.